Okay, let's see if we're all, if everybody's, if everybody's talking to everybody. <laughs> let's see, shall we? Okay, can you see me? Let's hope. There we go. I think we made it. Hello, welcome everyone. It is Drama Free Friday once again. Thank you so much for joining me. You see me and hear me. All is right with the world then. All is right with the world. Okay. Just. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, I see some new faces in the chat. Some new names, I should say. Welcome, welcome. I'm really glad you're here. <coughs> In case this is your first time joining me, my name is Barb Owen, and this is How to Get Creative. And uh, that's what we do here. And the show is known as Drama Free Friday, because that's what we do, too. We just leave all the drama and the garbage out somewhere else. We just don't. We don't need it here. So we just leave it somewhere else. And then for the next couple of hours, we just pretend like everything is unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> right? Hi, Jane. Hello, Zarifa and Lori and Belinda, Kimberly, Dar, uh, Patricia. Hey, Travis. Let's see. Who else do I see? Skinny Cat is... On my list. <laughs> Skinny Cat is on my list. Somewhere. I don't know why your name does not stick with me. Carrie. Sorry. Hi, Nanette. Hey, Patty. Um, Sylvia. Miss Allie. It's great to have you guys all here. Thank you so much. And anybody that I missed saying... Um, hello to please know that I'm very glad you're here and uh, I'm happy happy to be here with you today <clears throat> Galena says she misses my streams well this you, we had one two weeks ago and two weeks before that and now this one so we're doing pretty good here um, hi Merdina hi Kathleen yeah hi Kiki Colleen. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad to be here too. I'm ready to kind of get back in the swing of things. Hello, May. What a great group we have today. Hi, Tammy. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so let's um, chat for a minute and then we'll get crack a -lacking. Sorry, I'm just looking at my, uh, at my screen. Just making sure everything looks like it's A-OK, -okay, which it seems like it is, so <laughs> I think we're good to go. Um, yeah. So, we're back from Creativation. Uh, we did that little trip, and we streamed from Creativation. Uh, Cindy said she loved the tour with Race and wish we'd had more time. Yeah, well, it was a matter of we just simply ran out of of uh we ran out of several things energy and data and a couple other things you know you can only go do as much as you can do right hey janet hi meg good good you're glad to have you here hey brentangle my goodness brentangle i haven't seen your name in the chat in a long time i'm glad you're here <clears throat> that's wonderful so anyway um yeah we went to creativation a couple of weeks ago I think it's been a couple weeks ago. January, I have to say, was a complete blur. It was just, it started and then it's over. And in between the beginning and the end, and I'm having tea with you, by the way, to start out. Um, 
between the beginning and the end of January, I got the flu on Monday before I had to fly out to Phoenix to Creativation on Friday. And so that was a little, that was a little, things were a little iffy right in there. I do have to say things were a little bit iffy, but um, we managed and got out to Phoenix, which I am convinced must be the driest place on the face of the planet. <laughs> I've actually been told that it's not, but it certainly seemed that way to me. Um, because I'm telling you, I drank more water and tea and and anything I could get my hands on. It was just like, ha! Huh, I was parched. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> hoo wee. Anyway, so we did creativation. I fl- I traveled all day on Friday, which was the I don't know about the twentieth, nineteenth, the nineteenth. I traveled all day from really early in the morning until. Um, I was late getting into Phoenix and got there. I think it was about eight o'clock Phoenix time, which is an hour later for me. So I was, I traveled, I guess, like 13 hours or so that day to get there. And fortunately, God bless uh, the technical department, also known as race, because he drove from LA to Phoenix, picked me up. And then we got together from there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> right up there with Utah, huh? I'm telling you, it was really, really, I was dry. Whew, it was something. Hi, Barbara. Um, so it was just, it was just crazy. Anyway, so then we um, got our, got our stuff together, you know, had to, had to um, make some plans and so forth. And then Friday or Saturday morning, we were bright and early over at the convention center to get signed in and do all that and start meeting people that we had appointments with. So we did all that. And that happened all day Saturday. The funniest thing about Saturday, as much as I loved the entire experience and meeting all these um, interesting people and um, learning about new products and new, you know, all the stuff that they like to talk to you about at Creativation, which is mostly their new, new, uh, whatevers, you know, uh, I got to Saturday afternoon. I don't know. It was like five o'clock or something. We went by the, the beacon booth, the people that produce Fabertac and, um, five, two, seven. And I think they call it five twenty seven. I've always called it five, two, seven and power tack and a whole bunch of other adhesives. And I couldn't even remember my name. <laughs> That's how long that day was for me. So that was when we knew it was time to go home. Um, and so we we did. We uh, uh, Oh, you're welcome, Zandra. Good, I'm glad you got it. Uh, Zandra had asked me to pick up a catalog for it at Creativation, so I did. Finally got it in the mail. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yeah, when you can't remember your name, or to introduce yourself, then it's time to leave. So we did, and uh, we went back to the hotel. I think we ate someplace, but I couldn't tell you that for sure because I don't remember. And went back to the hotel, and um, all I remember is that I saw uh, we had a room. uh, We were staying in the same room, and I looked over at my technical department who's laying on his bed, and all I know is that he's got earbuds in and his iPad or something on his lap and it's seven o'clock and he is passed out sound asleep and he never woke up till the next morning. So it wasn't just me that was tired. It was it was a tiring day. Anyway, it was fun. Hello, Anastasia. Um, so it was um, it was it was uh, quite a day. So then Sunday was more appointments and then streaming for you guys, and then after we streamed for you guys from Creativation Live, then we streamed for the VIP members for the website. So it was, uh, it was, it was uh, just a bam, 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 bam kind of thing. So it was great, and and it was exhausting, and it was wonderful, and it was all those things. And then I had to be up by five o'clock the next morning to catch a plane at 7 15 to head back home and again I traveled I guess it was about it wasn't quite as long maybe 12 hours coming back to get back home <laughs> and then after that I slept for a week 
<laughs> Hi, Tori. So, yeah, so I slept for a week. And so now it's time to get, that's what happened to January. It just went, whew. And so now it's time to get back to work. It was fun. It was a fun thing. So anyway, that was creativation. Um, so we've scheduled, so far we have one creative chat scheduled. That's with Seth Apter. And he's going to stream with me in April. So you want to be sure and mark your calendars for the first Friday in April. And Seth is going to join me live. And we're going to talk about his new embossing powders and paints and so forth and so on. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so anyway, that is on the horizon. And then we have lots of other things that are coming up as well. So that was that. Um, tomorrow, just as an announcement, tomorrow is the VIP member class. So that's tomorrow, at, which is the 3rd of February at 2 p.m. Eastern. So if you're a VIP member of How to Get Creative, then you need to check your email for information. Um, and of course, anyone's welcome to join howtogetcreative.com. Anybody's welcome. We have different membership levels, including a dollar trial for an entire month. So you're welcome to try us out and see if you like us. And the VIP members get a special live class just for them once a month. It's always the day after I'm doing the live stream here, um, the first Saturday of the month for them. So anyway, okay. Hello, Liana. All right, what else? Um, rubber stamps. These are my rubber face my face rubber stamps and I've I've used these many 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 times and um, I'm just trying to get them where you can see them anyway these are the rubber stamps there's four images of the faces in here and the I'm down to the final five sets of the stamps so if you have been thinking about wanting the rubber stamps this is it this is all that's left so when those are gone, those are gone, and um, we may produce some new stamps, but those will never be produced again because they're out of here. They're gone. They're sayonara. They're out. They're history. So anyway, if you're interested in those, you can look in the description box below the video, and, um, and you'll see a link to that. Or you can just go to howtogetcreative.com and click on the tab at the top that says shop. Okay, so let's get on with it. Time to put the tea away. Get the illegal fluids off. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, the colors. Um, Travis said that Seth's paints looks, looked cool on the stream. I really like the color palette. Um, I just think they're, they're really interesting. I have not used the Paper Artsy Paint, which is who he designs colors for. I have not used the paper artsy paint, but I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of it because I'll tell you, one of the things that really attracts me to that paint is that it is said that it will not clog up your pens, markers, etc. So, I want to try that paint. Anyway, so that's that. Oh, thanks, Lorraine. Lorraine loves the stamps. Good. Oh, Bryn Tangle. Bryn's getting her order tomorrow. Oh, that's great. Excellent. So you're you're familiar then, Bryn, with his uh, with the paper artsy paints. I'm guessing. Or is this something new for you? I don't know. I haven't used them yet. So, but by the time um, when I just can take a breath here, I'm going to be ordering in a bunch of colors, and I'm going to order some of his embossing powders and so forth those look those are really interesting too interesting colors and stuff okay enough of me blathering on um so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about and ex and do an exercise from this book which is called paint mojo a, a mixed media workshop creative layering techniques for personal expression by tracy verdugo um, oh, Dorothy. Oh, Lucky Dorothy has all of Seth's embossing powders. That's great. Oh, and they're new for, for Bryn. Okay, cool. Well, you're going to have to let me know 
You're going to have to let me know, Bryn, what you think of them. Um, Vicki Ross says she ordered straight from Seth and got hers in a week, and she loves the paint. Great. That's good to know. Yes, and Kiki said that Paper Artsy does nice tutorials also. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Hello, Carla, and welcome to everyone who is here. It's great to have you. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Okay, give me one second here. And I just need to send a quick text message, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So anyway, this is the book that we're going to do an exercise from. Um, I am part of, in, or I'm in a book club that meets once a month out at a local store. And so what I'm going to be, or this is the current book that we're working on, the Paint Mojo. And so I thought, well, it'd be fun to just, just do something out of this book. So that's what we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do, anytime it says mixed media... <laughs> You know you're going to get your hands in it, right? So the first thing I do is put on gloves in a bottle, which is a shielding lotion. This is not one of those that's going to keep every chemical off of your skin. And so if you want something that is going to guarantee to keep every chemical from penetrating your skin, you need something that is um, more professional than gloves in a bottle. But what I use it for is to release the paint and inks and stuff from my skin. So, um, so anyway, that is um, what I have on first. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip over here to page 37. There's a lot of, there's a lot of writing in here, and also lots of different artists who have contributed to this book. And um, we're going to do this, this particular section, which is called Sacred Transformation Painting, because I just, I think you'll enjoy it, and I've played around with it a little bit, and I really enjoyed it, so I thought, hey, it'll be fun. So we're going to work, if you happen to have this book, we're going to start on page 36, and go through page 39, so that's what we're going to be working on. And uh, it's got some interesting things in it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on a canvas. If you are working along with me, which you're certainly welcome to do, you can do it on a canvas or a piece of watercolor paper or a piece of um, mixed media paper. Any of those things will work. So, yeah. So I'm going to be working on a 12 by 12 canvas. It's just a white 12 by 12 canvas and so that's what I'm going to be playing around with for this. I have done an exercise earlier and I did it on a piece of, this is mixed media paper and I'd say it's probably about 140 pound paper and so I was playing around with it on a piece of mixed media paper and I thought I really like the technique well enough I'm just going to go for a canvas so this is kind of the basis for what we're doing. Okay, so if you have any questions, be sure that you put them in all caps so that I can uh, so that I can see uh, so I can see what you're asking me. Otherwise, I think it's just you guys chatting with each other, which is perfectly fine. Okay, the first thing that they encourage you to do and this is um from, tr from the author, from Tracy. She encourages you to do is to write on your canvas. So I'm going to tilt my canvas so that I can actually do that. And what I'm using is the FW acrylic ink. Now I know a lot of people were able to take advantage of the clearance sale that was going on at Hobby Lobby here in the United States. And they bought a whole truckload of the acrylic inks. If you have any acrylic ink, it will work. Doesn't have to be FW. And also, if you have a um, uh, yes, an India ink, that should work fine too. Okay. So I am just going to 
shake the bottle a little bit get some paper towels ready and if you're working along with me the thing that we're going to write is we're just going to put a bunch of writing on this to begin with and i'm going to write using an eyedropper uh, or a dropper from an old bottle and rather than i tried using this dropper that came inside the the uh, bottle of ink but it just it wasn't working for me so i can get more ink using this dropper see how much ink it'll it'll pull up so that's what i'm going to be using and i'm just going to write a whole bunch of i am statements now if you don't want to do i am statements you can do stuff like just different kinds of words you can you can do um the kind of writing you know the brain dump kind of writing as well so i'm just going to write and you're not going to be able to read it i'm sure and it's messy i'm not going to worry about punctuation but i'm just kind of um, squeezing the dropper as i go and my goal is to fill and splats are good my goal is to fill this entire canvas Now, you could use something else, but this is just really quite freeing to write with uh, a dropper full of ink. And it's good to just, just go for it and just see what comes out. And when you run out, just reload your dropper and keep going. And if anybody can read your writing when you're done, It'll be a surprise, won't it? If you've never worked with a dropper like this, um, I encourage you to do that. It's just, it's uh, you can draw with it. I've done journal pages before. If I think of it, I'll see if I can find one to show you what I did here in a minute. Um, let's see. It is incredibly challenging for me to write and talk at the same time. <laughs> I know that's hard to imagine. Um, and the only thing I've done to this canvas is put a sloppy coat of gesso on it. You can use the words like this to be something that you do po uh, positive responses, or you can use it to do things that you're um, fearful about, you know, or things that, that you have running through your head, like I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm an idiot, you know, those kinds of things that your inner critic says, and you can write it out on the canvas and get it out of your head. I choose to do things that are more positive because that's what I... Uh, that's what works for me. I like to reinforce those things which are positive in my life as opposed to the crud and the crap. There's enough of that. There's always somebody around the corner that will tell you their opinion of you, and that's all it is, is their opinion. But I don't need to reinforce that. This is not calligraphy. <laughs> I guess you can tell that.
and you are going to use quite a bit of ink doing this so if you're um, if you're hoarding your inks this is a great way to to um, bust them out and use them And as I said, nobody has to know what you're writing but you. Okay, so we're going to call that good. Okay, so there it is. There's a lot of ink on there. Okay, hi, Marion. Hi, Alice. Sorry, every once in a while I get to look up and then I see people in the chat and I go, oh, didn't say hello. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe off, try not to get my hands in the ink, and wipe off the outside of my dropper and then just drop it into a container of water and squirt some water up into the dropper. My experience with these little droppers is that, is that they never come completely clean again. Okay, so. So I just have this in a container of water and then I just squirt the water up inside and uh, you can see some of it's coming out but I just leave it in there and then I'll work on cleaning it out later okay so that's that all right so we're gonna get a a um, heat gun here and we're gonna blast it with some heat uh oh you mean the technical department is in the house you guys have to behave now. No illegal fluids on your tables because the technical department is here. Now this is going to take a while because this is very wet, but I'm just going to dry parts of it and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I know, May. I know. Hurry. Hide the cup. It's not on the table. It's not on the table. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some paper towels because it's very wet. Hi, Sandy. And we're just going to put these paper towels on here. And you can see how it's just soaking up the ink. Now this is going to get on your hands. That's why we have the gloves in the bottle on our skin. So I'm just going to soak up the excess ink here, okay? And this is going to take a little bit to get all the ink soaked up. See? And so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking, can you see the texture now that's coming from the paper towel? as it is picking up some of the ink and transferring it around in the background, which I happen to think is very cool. So 
So every once in a while you got to get and see it's going to get on your hands. So if getting ink and paint on your hands freaks you out, this might not be your project. But I love how this just, it just starts messing things up um, right from the get-go. Messes, you know, the background up. It gives you some place to start. Nothing is too precious now. You know, we're good to go. Okay, and so now all I'm going to do is just finish drying it. I did prep the canvas with um, just a messy coat of white gesso brim. I did. I know, isn't that cool? I mean, this is a great way to just start an art journal page, you know? And if you still see some um, very shiny spots with the ink, then just get your paper towel and just start blotting. So I'm just blotting a little bit more any place that I see anything that's very uh, shiny. And if you're working with paper, you know, you can always turn the paper over and dry it from the back side as well. So let me get it just another little shot of heat. Well, Sherry if, Sherry, if you don't have ink, then just use watered-down acrylic paint and a brush. You can do the same exact thing. It's just acrylic. So, use an acrylic paint. If you have India ink, use India ink. Okay, so um, let me get an art journal page, if I can find it. Let me get to this one. And show you a couple of things that I've done with the ink dropper. It'll take me a second because I have several art journals that are the same. So I always have to go digging through them to see. So we'll give that another second. Nope, it's not this one. Okay. I guessed wrong. So we'll try we'll try this one. But one of the the fun techniques with um, the dropper using a dropper is you can also draw faces and things like that okay seriously I know it is in one of these journals here's here's one okay here's one example some of you may remember this because I think I did this on stream I think um, but this is all drawn using a dropper and acrylic ink exactly the same thing that we've done here except I just um, put in a background and then I was looking at an image and then trying to reproduce that image you know catch the essence of the image on the on the page but this is all drawn exactly the same as I'm doing right now using the dropper and the acrylic ink so there's that one and I have another one here if I can figure out where he is I've drawn him a number, this guy, I don't have any idea who he is, but I've drawn him a number of times. So give me a second and see if I can, see if I can find him. If not, I have one more journal to look in. This, by the way, this right here, see these things? 
This is all stuff that was from when the technical department was a little boy, and he decorated that in Sunday school or something. And I found it, so I ripped it off the... It was like around a can or something. I ripped all that out and put it, put it in my art journal. I know. I had to. I had to. I couldn't leave that. Okay, so give me a second. I'm looking for the other... He's here someplace. <clears throat> the dropper is one of my favorite things. I would never have had the courage to try that dropper technique. Um, here he is. So this is done the same way. Um, I would never have had the courage to do this, except that I took a class from Carla Sondheim. And Carla... It has a class on faces, I think. I can't remember exactly the name of it. and um, But this was one of the techniques that she did in the class. Of course, it's my spin on it because it, I can't do anything exactly the way somebody else does it. Um, but that's using that same thing, the dropper and the acrylic ink. So when I saw this exercise in paint mojo i'm like oh yeah i gotta do that because i haven't really written with the dropper but anyway both of these are done the same the same way this old guy i have drawn him many times in several different mediums so this is ink and uh, on a deli paper background so everything in here in the back is a patchwork of deli paper same thing over here okay all right so that's that. So the ink and the dropper is not just for stuff like this. You can do some really fun things with it for a, just a rudimentary kind of tool. Now you are going to get messy and that's going to be the how of that. So, okay, so we've got this dry. Okay, next step is I'm going to get rid of my paints here. Get a fresh palette paper. So what we're going to do now is we're going to paint over it with thin gesso. Um, and so that's what I've got going on here. This is just an inexpensive white acrylic gesso. And so I'm going to get a glob of it out here and I'm going to get some clean water because my inky um, dropper has totally colored my water so I'll be right back. Okay, that looks a little better, don't you think? <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> All right. Um, will they work on the side of furniture to draw horses? Yes, um, Race knows all about that. When he was a little boy, he took an ink pen. Uh, actually, it was, I think, a Sharpie. And he used that Sharpie to draw a horse on the on a... It was the the lever that raises your feet. I'm just getting some ink off my hands, you know, on a like a recliner, and he drew a horse on it. <laughs> his mother was not too happy about that. <clears throat> his dad thought it was cool, but his mom wasn't too happy about it. Okay, so I'm going to take some water and some gesso here, and I'm just going to put this over all this. And you can see immediately you're going to find places that are not um, completely dry. The whole point of this is not to get too connected to, or as I like to say, you don't get too married to the outcome. Because until this entire process is over with, it's going to change and change and change and change. 
But also one of the cool things about a process like this is that you can dis you can discover techniques that you want to use in future applications, whether it be an art journal page or um, other backgrounds or backgrounds for paintings and so forth. Okay, so the lovely background that you guys were all excited about is no more. <laughs> but, and so that's why this technique works if you want to do like a brain dump type thing, you know, where you're just draining off bad, the bad internal stuff. That's why this works, because then by the time you're done with this, at this step, you can't even see any of that stuff, right? <clears throat> Cindy did a horse pillow for her grandparents and her granddad said it was a moose. There you go. <laughs> and Ray says, yes, his horse was very realistic. Yes, I knew it was a horse. Indeed, I did. Okay, so we're going to dry this. <laughs> Cindy cried for hours. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Travis. <laughs> His parents wouldn't let him have pumpkin pie. I got to read this for you guys that are watching the recording, which, by the way, thank you for watching the recording. <clears throat> he says he got mad at his parents when he was about three because they wouldn't let him have any pumpkin pie until everybody took a nap. So he got him back by spreading it all over his walls and most of his stuffed animals. <laughs> Hi, Becky. <sighs> <laughs> he doesn't remember. Travis says he doesn't remember doing it, but he remembers watching his mom clean it up and listening to her, um, as he said, admonishment. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, you'll see me going back and forth between a couple of heat guns. This one is the Ranger heat tool, and um, I can use this one and talk over it more easily. <clears throat> the other one is an embossing gun, and it is much louder, and it uh, puts out a more focused stream of um, heat. But this one I can get right down on the surface, and um, and it's not as loud. So you'll see me, depending on what it is I want to accomplish, I'll be working back and forth between the two. Now, <clears throat> this does work better if you will take time between the steps, you know, um, rather than kind of trying to push it, which of course we're going to push it because that's what we do here. <laughs> we see how fast we can get something done. <laughs> that's right, May. If you, she says, if you can't remember it, it wasn't you, Travis. <laughs> I agree with that. Well, one day there was a, a certain little boy that was supposed to be taking a nap and he took an ink pen and drew a mural um, right above the baseboard. He begged me into letting me take his nap in, our, in my bedroom, our bedroom. And um, when I, I thought he was awfully quiet. So I was really enjoying that peace and quiet until I went in to check on you know, see if he was, how sound asleep he was. He hadn't been asleep at all. He had been drawing a mural right above the baseboard on all over the wall. Again, his dad thought it was pretty cool. I was just horrified <laughs> because it was ballpoint ink. I'm like, oh no, we will never get that covered up. So yeah, his dad I always thought what he did was so cute, and I always was horrified at the things that that child did. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do now, <clears throat> it was very realistic. Yes, it was. <laughs> and I wish I'd taken pictures of it. If I could have had it to do over again, I would take pictures of it and put it in my art. Okay, so the next thing we're going to use for this is oil pastels. These are the Daily Rowney Simply Oil Pastels. This is a very inexpensive set of oil pastels. You get 25. And uh, 
<laughs> yes, a child that is very silent all of a sudden means they're getting into trouble. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, mother's love can only go so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so we're using these. And so I'm just going to pull out of this set of oil pastels. I'm going to pull out, um, this says burnt umber. Well, this is no more burnt umber than, than, yeah, that's crazy. This is burnt umber. Let's see what color it says this is. Dark brown. <laughs> yeah, that. Okay, my friends, this is not burnt umber. But that's what it says. This is more of a burnt sienna. Anyway, we're going to use that one. And then I'm going to pull out white. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use black after a while. You can use whatever colors you want. But what we're going to do is, again, I'm taking these instructions from the exercise in the Paint Mojo book on page 36 to 39, I think it was. Yes, so the next step in this process is I'm going to draw a spiral, okay? Yeah, listen, listen to him. <laughs> even, poor race, even now you can be made to feel like a six-year-old. No, no, no. Hello, T. <laughs> he was a good kid and he still is. That is absolutely the truth. I would... I would not trade him for a million of other kids at anywhere, anytime, anyhow. Okay, so I'm taking what they say is burnt umber, which is not, and I'm just going to draw a spiral. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm going to leave a little space around the edges here, maybe an inch. But this is a um, an oil pastel. Don't I'm not going to push so hard that. It dents my canvas, but I'm putting some pressure down. Okay, see, I'm just drawing a spiral. And I'm leaving some space between the lines as I come into the center of the spiral. All right, so, I mean, that is as hard as it gets. Then the next instruction on this particular thing from Tracy was to go back over this with white. Now, I'm not quite sure the reason for the white, but who am I to argue? So I'm not going on top of the line. I'm just going kind of beside the line. So this is white. These are oil pastels. Oil pastels never dry, okay? It's not like a chalk pastel, which is very um, dusty. But these also never dry. They'll blend with paint thinner and, and so forth. And um, I really like the oil pastels for lots of things. And um, I use them a lot. But I always have to have something over the surface of them. You have to seal them in some way because they never dry. They will always continue to come off on, on whatever. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to my, um, what they say is burnt umber. It's a reddish brown, just because that's as close to the color as they had in the instruction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a pattern inside the spiral. And again, I'm going to start from the outside and I'm just going to draw a series of scallops, okay? And once again, I'm not sure why I can't talk and write at the same time. However, I find it very challenging to do that. <laughs> and anybody that can talk and write and do all kinds of things at once. I, I'm pretty good at multitasking in other ways, but not so good when it comes to writing and talking. So anyway, I'm just making scallops in here. It could be circles. It could be whatever else you would want to do, a pattern of some kind that goes 
throughout the spiral. Okay, so far so good. So there's still some space around the outside edge where I don't have anything. So I just have a spiral. But this works really well for a square piece uh, in a square format. The other one that I did, this was done, I'll turn it this way, this was done on a 9 by 12 piece of mixed media paper. And then I actually drew the dragonflies too far down, so I chopped off the top of it by an inch. So this is actually 9 by 11. Um, but the spiral is much, you know, wonkier when you do it on a rectangle like this. It's easier on this. So. It is kind of looking like a snake, isn't it? It is. So it's much easier on a square format. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick colors that are um, acrylic paint. And I'm going to use warm colors. And I'm going to use um, artist acrylic paints. And I'm going to grab, because what I have in front of me is the Dina Wakely paint. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to use five colors because I have five tools on my hand. <laughs> okay. So I got five tools on my hand, so hence five colors. And then I have gesso. So I've still got white gesso. If I need any more white, I also have a big old tube of white acrylic, and I will use that if I need any more white. Okay, so I'm going to load up my palette here with some dollops of paint. So I got lemon. This is tangerine. You don't have to use Dina Wakely paint. Um, I happen to really like it, and um, so, yeah, I'm using it. Also, I find that if you don't use your stuff, it will go bad, including paint. Um, sometimes it dries out on you or it changes consistency. For example, this one, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. Let's see if we can take a look at it here. This one is the Blackberry Violet. And you see how creamy, how very creamy these paints appear to be. Until you get over to this one and it's very um, kind of gritty and chunky looking. The consistency has changed in this color, which doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Um, but the point is, use your stuff. Use your stuff. So I'm going to put the lids back on these, not tightly, but just kind of flip the lid back down. And so I'm going to use um, <clears throat> Hi, Eclectic Collections. Nice to have you here. What's your name? Thanks for joining us. Hello, Beth. Um, sorry, just looked up for a second. <clears throat> so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be loading my fingers. Okay, so here we go. Again, if you don't like messy, this may not be your thing. Okay, these are my tools. All right. And now I'm going to paint um, in my little, I'm going to start, see if I can find, here's where I started right here, this one. And so now I'm going to paint, again, going around this um, spiral. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's see how it works. Let's see if I can do this, huh? Again, I have to do something and talk at the same time. This is rather a meditative kind of process I found when I was working on it. And when you run out of uh, paint, then add some more. And then if you want to vary the colors, then just pick up some white on your fingers. Okay, so I've added white. And then I'm just going to go back up here, and, I'm, and I guarantee you that I will get my fingers confused 
but I've now got some different um, colors. Hey, Josie. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to just put some more color. And I'm just going to keep painting and painting until, and I can do this in any kind of order that I want to do it. It's just easier for me to remember. Um, if I just kind of go in order. And you're going to get, I'm getting um, globs of paint, which I kind of like, and you'll see why. So I'm not worrying about about, um, you know, like spreading it out. And I'm just simply going to continue this. So it is finger painting at its best. And I need a little more white. Hi, Laura. Nice to have you lurk. It's okay. I understand. I lurk a lot in um, streams because I'm usually working and the stream is on in the background. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to pick up some white on my fingers and then I'm going to go back in and pick up some paint because now I'm kind of getting tints of the colors. Okay, so I've now got more paints. And so now we're going to keep on going. Now, if you want to do something where it's not in order, which I'm going in order just because it helps me kind of keep on track here. But you certainly don't have to go in order. You can just do whatever you feel like doing, right? The only thing I'm trying to do is not get two in the same order. So I'm going to kind of switch it up here a little bit so that I don't have them exactly in the same um, the same place. And now I've got my now I've picked up the colors on the wrong fingers and guess what we're gonna just go with it. Oops, let's do something else here. So now, now it's going to get more interesting because I'm now getting my fingers confused as to what finger had what color. And then we're just going to kind of mess around here with... whatever and just keep on going now could you use more colors than this absolutely you know you could do as many colors as you want I was just only willing to get just so many of my fingers all um, see I can't even remember what color is on what finger here and it's easiest for me if I just keep turning my um, palette. I keep lining up the reds. Isn't that funny? I keep lining up the reds. That's the crazy thing. Craziness, I tell you. Craziness. So I'm just dabbing paint inside each one of those scallops that I drew. It's actually kind of nice to just get your hands in it. All right. And let's just put, okay, so we have 
all of our shapes that we had that pattern now has paint inside it and I have lots of paint in my hand so I'm gonna get rid of that the X you know the excess stuff do you see now why I said I put on the gloves in a bottle uh-huh uh-huh now the thing about it is you don't want to get any of this get married to any layer it's just like an art journal page you don't get married to any layer because it's going to change and change and change so I'm just getting some of the stuff off but do you see how it comes off much more easily um, that's acrylic paint man and it's coming off my skin with a baby wipe and a paper towel because of putting that gloves in a bottle I'm telling you if you don't have that I highly recommend it or some other sort of um, skin shielding lotion okay so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna recap my paints because I have plenty on my palette for the time being so I'm just putting the lids back on my paints and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dry this okay yeah don't scratch your face or any other part of your body just saying <laughs> I have stories about that but I won't bore you with those okay so I'm gonna dry them dry this a little bit okay so I just want to start drying this a little bit And if you wanted to add more paint, for example, if you wanted to add more paint um, so that it wasn't quite so neat and tidy, you can just get in here and you can just start adding, you know, get your, get your fingers going and you can break up some of this evenness that, you know, is going on in here. so that it's not quite as you know exactly linear as you're working around in the circle so you know you can do that and just kind of break it up here and there okay so let's just put a little bit more stuff in this well, you know, everybody needs to paint with their hands sometimes, and that is not my, it is not my strong suit to get my hands into stuff, although I'm not opposed to my hands being dirty, it's just not something, well, we all know how I feel about glitter, right? <laughs> okay, so we've kind of, you know, broken it up a little bit, which means now i got to get rid of the the uh, messiness again so let's get clean up the hands again a little bit you will blow through some baby wipes when you're doing this kind of stuff just get the bulk of it off okay back to the heat gun yeah you don't need good brushes for this technique that is for certain so we're just going to dry this a little bit okay Acrylic paint, in my experience, starts drying very quickly. I'm not a super experienced acrylic painter. I started out painting in oils um, a long time ago. I was much more familiar with that. Acrylic scared the crap out of me for a long time. And um, there are things about acrylic paints that are very frustrating to me, but oh well. You know, you got to push yourself and do new stuff. Okay, so this is by far not dry, but it's begun to skin over in places. So just so we don't get too married to this outcome, we're going to squirt it with some water. Okay. So we got some water going on here. And then I've got a sheet. This You can now use an art journal page or just a sheet of mixed media paper, which is what this is. And I'm going to just put this on here and smush that around. Okay? 
So now we're further going to get rid of all that, hopefully. It didn't smush quite as much as I'd hoped, so I'm trying to get rid of some of the evenness of it all. There, that was better. That was better. We got more stuff going on and some stuff hanging out on the side. So let's just put this on here and just print what was on the paper. And we'll print around on here just to kind of not let this be quite so pristine and lovely. Now, if you don't like this kind of stuff, you know, you see me doing it, then don't do that. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this paper that's got paint all over it now. Put it someplace where I'm not going to lay my hand in it and then go back to the heat gun. <laughs> Sandy says the lack of symmetry makes her feel like her head is about to explode. Sandy, that's why you like mandalas. <laughs> They're very symmetrical. <laughs> Hello, Emma. Okay, so we're going to um, hit this with the heat a little bit. But do you see how it's... it's um, It's beginning to mush and meld. How's that for technical terms? But we can still see some of the writing in the background. You can still see the spiral going on. I mean, there's there's a lot of things you can still see about it. Hello, Robin. Okay, so we've got that happening. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to go back to that kind of smushing kind of technique that we did early with the black ink and my goal here is just to pick up the excess um, so I'm not getting a lot pick up the excess paint and just keep the heat gun on it and if I spread some of it around okay that's good that's all right one of my favorite uh, things that my son ever did in art class in high school is he was screwing around in class. Now, he wouldn't admit that, but he was. He was screwing around in class, and it was time for class to be over. We'll, we're going to find out whether race is still here. And it was time for class to be over, and he didn't have anything done. So he took his paper, and he went around to everybody's palette. Okay, so here's the palette. He took his paper and he went around and he did this, you know, took his paper and laid it in the palette, went to the next one, laid it in the palette, and the next one. And then he turned that in as his um, exercise from that class, that art class, and he got an A on it. <laughs> this reminds me of that. I framed it and put it on the wall because I loved it. Even after he told me how he did it, because I thought that is too funny. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hands in here. It's pretty dry. But what I want to do is I this... Now, she doesn't talk about doing this in the book. But I like doing this with acrylic paint. Um, and also, the, the oil pastels will move a little bit because the heat is going to melt them a little bit. Um, but I like to do this with acrylic paint and gesso. It burnishes the paint. And it starts moving it around, and I and it gets uh, it also spreads out the lumps. If you got any lumps left, it will spread that out. But you can see I'm not getting a lot on my hands, but it is blending a little bit more in the background. Now you do have to be a little bit careful because the heat gun is hot. Okay, so once again, a little baby wipe. Hi, Petra. Oh, good. Welcome. 
It was genius, Travis. It was. You got an A on that assignment, too. <laughs> Obviously, the teacher did not see him do that. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close-up look at the uh, colors here. So I'm giving you a really close look. Here, this is from the, the upper left where I began. I began up here. Okay, so I'm just going to give you just kind of an overall look. So if it looks messy, that's what it's supposed to look like. But again, you could stop at any point and go, nope, that's gone too far. Don't like that. But I happen to love the process. So just wanted you to see really close what it looks like. Okay. All right. Okay, so back to um, where we are. So the next thing we're going to do is um, you're going to pick a, the, the exercise states that you pick a symbol. And there's a lot of that throughout this book. You know, personal iconic um, iconography, personal symbols, and so forth. There's a lot of exploration about your personal stuff. Um, and they used a butterfly as that symbol, which a butterfly is very meaningful for me. And um, I, those of you that have been hanging around with me for a while know that story. Um, however, um, I'm doing the butterfly partly because that was what was suggested in the book and also partly because I like it. So what I did was I took a piece of scrapbook paper, okay, and this was a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, and I just drew a um, kind of a wonky butterfly. On I only drew the wings on half of it. I drew the whole body. I drew the wings on half. I folded it in half and then just cut around it so it was somewhat symmetrical. Doesn't have to be, but that's what I did, okay? And I did that to make it easy for um, streaming purposes. Otherwise, I would have probably just... Um, drawn it. You know, I probably would have just drawn it um, loosely on the canvas and just, you know, done whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to, I told you earlier I was going to use the black oil pastel, so that's what I'm using here. And I've got it kind of roughly centered on my canvas. Okay, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect. And this just, again, for the purposes of the stream, I'm doing, I'm going to go around it. so that I can get my butterfly on here. I'm just going around just to get the outline. Using a black oil pastel. You could use some other black medium or a different color if you chose. You could use a brush and acrylic paint. That's perfectly fine as well. I, I don't know what she suggested in uh, in the book. I don't even remember because this is what I used. So. If you're good at freehanding things, then just, you know, just freehand it. All right, so there's, we've got a butterfly on here. So I'm going to kind of put the body in here and I'm going to kind of just separate the wings. All right, so we've got a butterfly on the canvas. So far, so good. Yeah, the texture from the paper towel is really cool on it too. I agree with you. Now, when I was doing this one with the dragonflies, I totally freehanded those. And you can clearly see because nothing is symmetrical. So I totally freehanded that with the black oil pastel on this one. But you can see how it's coming together, right? Because you see what we have in here. You see that in here. Now, canvas gets texture that paper doesn't. So there is that. Okay, um, 
Next thing, so we've got our symbol. So our butterfly is our symbol for this. It could be a heart. It could be dragonflies. It could be a big flower. It could be a big sun. It could be whatever, you know, whatever is your symbol that you like. Or it could just be something that you just like, right? So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a dark color. And I'm going to use, um, this is the Dina Wakely Night color it's like a really really dark navy kind of color this is a strong color so I need very little of it super strong color and then I'm going to use a uh, smaller brush and some water I'm going to thin it down so I'm just dipping my brush in water Let's see if I can get my Get things over here a little closer so you can see so there's my water well and then I'm just gonna um, thin this way down to where it's pretty transparent I mean it's still very strong this is like a dark purpley navy kind of color okay so that's what I'm doing and then I'm gonna paint in the body of the butterfly and we're going to see if I can keep this a little bit transparent. That's a little too transparent because it's beating up on the canvas. So we may have to give this a couple of coats. Because what I want, my intention, is to allow the stuff underneath to still kind of peek through. And then if I want to change the shape of the body and that kind of thing, I can do that. Okay, but my goal is to try to have a little bit of that background still kind of poking through. And so that's good enough. Okay, good enough. And I'm going to hit that with some heat just so I don't get my hands in it. So just enough to set that, and that paint was really thin. Um, there wasn't much to it, so it's going to dry pretty quickly. Okay, good enough. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the colors that I used when I did the spots in here with my fingers, when I finger painted in here, I'm going to go back to those colors plus white. And then I'm going to paint in the background around the butterfly now. Okay. So I'm cleaning the um, that really dark color out of my brush as much as possible. I could get a new brush, but, you know, where's the fun in that when we could mess with cleaning out the brush. These are Ranger brushes, by the way. There's nothing nothing fancy about these. These are inexpensive brushes. I happen to really like them for this kind of stuff because if they ruin if they get ruined, oh well. Okay, so I'm gonna use now the same colors. I've got the same colors up here that I used in the spiral and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white and I'm going to pick up one of these colors, let's say the red, okay? And I'm just going to start playing with 
this around the outside shape and if the paint is sticky which it tends to do um, because acrylic starts drying out then I just pick up a little bit of water with my brush to so it'll move okay then after I get so far, then I'll dab my brush off on a paper towel. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze the paint out on a paper towel. But I'm not going to necessarily clean it. Then I'm going to get some more white and some more whatever other color I want to use. And I'm going to just switch colors. And this is where you just um, paint intuitively which means that you just pick up whatever color you feel like picking up to blend between the two colors just pick up one of the colors in this case I picked up that pinky color and then I just blend it between the two colors to blend them together okay and I try to keep the edges um, so that the edges are raggedy Okay, up here. See how that's kind of blended out? And that's done that way on purpose so that I don't have a hard edge to try to blend over uh, when I get up to that place. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some more white. Um, I'm going to pick up some of this color. This happens to be fuchsia, I believe. I didn't tell you the colors, all the colors. This is fuchsia. So I'm going to put some fuchsia in here. And I'm just doing this as I, whatever I feel like in the moment, okay? I'm just picking it up. But the white is going to help um, change the color. And yet we're still using the same colors we used within the, the body of the butterfly. So that works out um, to keep it cohesive. So I just blend over the top of those two colors together until I get them to blend the way I want them to blend. Okay. Again, if the paint gets sticky, either spray it with water or pick up some water. And then I'm just going to keep working my way around my butterfly. So I'm going to pick up, I'm going to put a little bit more um, orange on my palette because I've about used up all my orange. All right, so let's pick up some yellow here and see what it looks like. So I'm just brush mixing some white into the color. But it's not super heavy. I'm not using a big heavy coat of paint. Okay, and the, again, I want some of this background business to be able to come through. So um, I'm not trying to completely obliterate the background. Always going back before the color is completely dry and blending between the colors as I until it suits me. So do you see how we're getting the blend? And I'm just literally picking up whatever um, whatever I feel like picking up. Okay, so working our way around. Let's go to orange. So I'm going to pick up some orange. And I'm going to come in here. And just adding more color. This is why you want to have colors that will work together because you're blending from one color into another. So that's why you need colors that will work together. That's why you would not, at this point, um, I would not pick up this purple, this blackberry violet, and put it into this because that's not going to give me a very good uh, result. 
but I can go into red and I'm going to be fine. So, so that, that uh, blackberry violet is a little bit of a tricky color there. You have to be careful where it is that you put it on your painting and what you're blending it with. Okay, do you kind of get the kind of get the idea? It's not this is not meant to be some um, phenomenal work of art when you're finished. This is more about, as it said, expressive painting. And I will tell you that this is a challenge for me to do this expressive types of painting. I'm much more comfortable with, um, you know, knowing exactly where I'm going to go and exactly what my thought pattern is and so forth. But do you see the difference from this side to this side? I don't know about you, but I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, so we're going to just keep picking up color. I'm going to go back and this time I am going to pick up that um, blackberry violet. because I can blend that with the red. Oops. Sometimes you get it where you didn't mean to. So sometimes you use your hand or your fingers as a paint remover as well as a painting tool. And as I am um, blending, I'm doing just little short X strokes and I'm not blending really hard. I'm kind of blending, kind of dusting over the top to blend those colors together. And you can always come back and add more colors later, okay? So I'm just going to keep working my way around here. So now I'm into this purpley color. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up. So I've got this purpley color, then I've got fuchsia. So I can either go back to red or I can use fuchsia in here. So let's try the fuchsia and also let me put a little bit more red on my palette in case we need it. So let's get a little bit of um, the fuchsia and some of the white. And let's see what that does, because that will blend fine with that purpley color, that blackberry violet. All right, and so now I'm going to come into red because red will work again into that fuchsia. That will work into that. I can blend into that with no problem. So I am not planning this. There's no way to plan this kind of thing. You just... Um, not this style of exercise. And that's what I, if you decide to do something like this, that's how I would encourage you to think of it as an exercise. Um, and just enjoy the process, have fun with it. And working on around here, I'm gonna add some, work my way into yellow. And 
And so I'm picking up some more yellow in here. So you can see it really doesn't take all that long to get around the butterfly. Um, just kind of putting the colors together kind of willy-nilly. Kind of however it comes together, it comes together, right? And so because I went back to red, I can come back into this purple a little bit more. Okay, so let's get in here around his head. And then if you want to, you know, later on you can come back and, and, uh, and I may do this, come back with a fine line bottle with black paint and emphasize the, uh, the wings and stuff, the, the, you know, true up the, the lines of the wings and so forth. I may do that more later. My paint is getting pretty sticky now, so it's um, it's not wanting to work with me quite as easily as it did. That's why when you sit down to do something like this, you either got to get after it and not worry about stuff. You got to just get after it and do it, or you got to get fresh paint out every so often. Okay, now I can lay it down on the um, desk, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. So I'm just coming in here with a little bit more red and so forth, and just kind of covering some of the holes of the canvas. And I can do more of that later without you guys having to sit here and watch all that. But you kind of get the idea, right? Okay. So we've got now, we've got the butterfly coming up with a background, but you've seen all the steps that are involved in, um, in doing it, right? Okay, so let me clean my brush out. So let me clean out my brush here. Because it is really full of acrylic paint now as I didn't clean my brush through that entire process. Okay, so let's give this a shot of heat, which won't take much to dry this because the background is didn't have a lot of paint on it. Oh, hey Jamie, you were put in chat timeout. Oh no, say it ain't so. Jamie, say it ain't so. Okay, it's not completely dry, but it's um, dry enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a color that's on the completely opposite side of the color wheel. And so I'm going to use turquoise and um, also Adina Wakely paint. So I'm going to use turquoise and a little more white. So I'm going to get out a little bit of white. So i got turquoise and a little bit of white paint. Okay. 
and I don't know whether you can see it or not, but there's a section in here that where the spiral goes around and there's none of the colors out in there. Same thing up here and up here and down here. And I'm going to, that's where I'm going to put this accent color, this turquoise accent color. So I'm going to add some white into it just to tone it down a little bit. Okay, so I put some white in with it. I'm not, I'm just brush mixing. I'm not mixing um, with a palette knife, just brush mixing. And I'm going to put some turquoise in here as an accent. And if I paint right over that oil pastel, that's fine. I'm not, so you can see it right there. The color's not showing up as well. I'll show it to you here in a minute with a little better. So you can see the, can, the uh, color a little bit better. And I've got my hand under the canvas <clears throat> just because it makes it a little easier for me to keep moving it around. So that's going to make it look like it's tilted to you guys, but um, that's because it is. <clears throat> okay, so we've got some turquoise going on. So let's come up here and do the top part of the wing. Again, a little bit of white mixed into the turquoise and I'm just using that spiral the edge of the spiral um, to tell me where I'm going to put that turquoise now I have to tell you that if I had not been following the instructions um, by Tracy Verdugo from Paint Mojo when I did this, I would never ever have done these steps in this order. So <clears throat> um, I'm very happy that I did that because it really made me stretch um, and do something that I would not have normally tried, um, something that was completely outside my comfort zone. Although I'm familiar with brushes and paints and that kind of stuff, this particular technique I would never in a million years have started out to think, oh, well, I'll do this and then I'll do that and then I'll do something else. It's like, nope, nope, wouldn't have done it. But I loved the end result with the dragonflies. <clears throat> And you do get a completely different effect when you're on paper versus canvas. Okay, but what you see now is you begin to see the butterfly kind of pop up even more off the canvas. <clears throat> okay. Hello, Linda McAllister. So there is more of the um, accurate color of the turquoise. Okay, so you can just, I just want you to get the colors. When you're working with um, a canvas, you are going to get some of the canvas, um, unless you're really careful, you're going to get some of the canvas texture showing through. If that bothers you, then you got to work a little bit harder. So, it's not bothering me because this is just for fun anyway, okay? So there we are at that point. Um, and I'm going to hit this with some heat again. You. it's fun it's just a fun it's 
These 12 by 12 canvases are inexpensive. They're, they're, you can usually pick them up in sets of at least two for not very much money and then you can just play with them and have a good time and that's that. Okay. So now I'm going to go to just some kind of contrast color. In this case, I'm going to use um, Genesis Green. This is another De La Rowney paint. Totally different than what's going on here. I'm going to use that and a skewer, wooden skewer, if I can find it. I have one here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so I've got Genesis Green. This is a pearlescent ink. And so I'm going to get that out and I'm just going to add some stuff and then I'm going to play with the skewer and see where, where we go. All right, so I got a paper towel at the ready. I'm just going to use the, um, the dropper from that comes in the ink. And so I'm going to just, don't everybody have a heart attack when I do this. Then I'm just going to take my skewer and drag it through the paint. Or through the ink, sorry. It's acrylic ink. You could do the same thing with acrylic, thin down acrylic paint. You could paint it on here. If you have any fine line bottles, you could um, you put some really thin stuff in a fine line bottle and you could do that. So just putting, just scratching on a little bit of, um, scratching through the color. And you can always come back and clean up things if you don't, if, you know, let it dry. If there's something you don't like about it, then come back and, and add something else to it later. Okay. But just play. Don't get married to the outcome in any particular stage. Just enjoy it. Just have fun with it. Just see what happens. If you absolutely hate it, set it aside till tomorrow. Come back. See if you still hate it. If you do, then paint over it with gesso and do something else on it. Start over. Most of the time I find that if I wait till tomorrow on something that um, I look at it the next day and I go, you know, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. So we're just adding some colors in here. You can draw symbols into um, areas like the wingtips are a good place to put symbols if they're, you know, like spirals are your thing or something else is your particular symbol 
circles or checkerboards or whatever. Okay, so we got part of our on just a minute I don't know if you guys can see me or not um, I am having some technical difficulties here Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, for some reason my chat disconnected, so I had to had to reconnect. Now, acrylic ink um, stays wet so you're gonna have to be careful when you start doing stuff like this you got to be a little bit careful that you don't stick your hand in it but this is kind of fun just use you know use something that you don't ordinarily paint with I don't generally paint with sticks you know So I'm just grabbing that wet ink and just pulling it out. Just to make it kind of give it another interesting kind of design. But you'll notice that I'm not putting a lot of ink down and then going back and trying to manipulate it because that ink, you know, even though it stays wet for a while, it still wants to... Um, set up, start setting up on you. So we've added some stuff to make it, you know, give it something else to, to be. All right, let's give it a little heat. Hi, Connie. How are Dee Dee's cats doing? Well, Charlie is finally eating again after having um, almost every single tooth in his head pulled. He's finally, it took him quite a while to eat. Fortunately, he was good and fat to begin with. And because he was so fat, he could afford to lose weight. <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's about back to, he's not ever going to get as chunky as he was, I don't believe. But he's doing quite well. And Chance um, gained every bit of the weight that Charlie lost. As I was trying to get Chance to eat, or Charlie to eat, Chance was very happy to try every single food I brought into the house, and he loved it all. So they're they're fat and sassy and and uh, doing doing fine. Okay, so I'm gonna because I don't like a couple of things here. I'm gonna go back to this night. It's really dark blue. And 
and just add a little bit of the blue back in here. And because my brush has a little bit of white on it, it's uh, combining with the, the night. And I may do more to that later, but I just wanted to clean that up a little bit. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you can use the, the same color of ink or whatever other color ink you might have or might want to use. And you can add more stuff around it. Um, I'm going to use my fine liner bottle that has black in it. This has a black um, airbrush paint in it. So just giving it some scratchy outlines. And so I'm going to let that just sit. And perhaps come back and do something else to it later. I'm not sure. And then for the sides, what I'm going to do is um, I will take the same colors that I've used. Um, or a dark one. Actually, I might use that night. That's probably what I'm going to do. Probably going to use the night color, which is that dark, dark navy blue. So that's what is on the canvas right here. And then just paint, and this is going to be really hard for you guys to see, but um, at the, I think you can tell what I'm doing. So I'm just painting the sides of the canvas. I'm not worrying too much about the edge up here. This edge right up um, where it comes over on the top. I'm not worrying about that at the moment. But you need something to kind of um, help frame it in, especially if you're going to if you do something like this and you want to hang it on a wall, you got to have you either got to frame it or you got to do something to finish the edges so that you can just hang it up without a frame. And 
it's very risky to um, have all this wetness going on. Because sure as the world, you can just stick your hand right in it. But we're just about done, and when I get, um, when this, when all of this is totally dry, what I'll do is I'll come back and use some um, Inca Gold, and I will uh, put Inca Gold along that edge, because I love the iridescence of the Inca Golds which is like um, rub and buff, except it doesn't stink. There are other metallic rubs out there, so Inca Gold is not the only one. It just is the one that I have the most colors of. Okay, so basically you'll get the idea of what that's going to look like. So you can kind of already see that it helps frame, frame it in. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's see if I can get an edge dry enough. that I can put the Inca Gold on it so you can get the idea. Let's see if we can get this edge dry enough that we can do it. Okay, I think that edge is dry enough we can do something with it. Um, some other things that you can do um, on things like this, you can use markers. Paint markers would be your best um, bet for things like this. You can add, um, let's see if this one will work for me. Um, I haven't read the whole book, Vicki, so I couldn't really tell you. Um, I've enjoyed, I really enjoyed what I've what I've read in it so far. That's about all I can tell you. I'm looking for a paint pen that's going to cooperate with me. Okay. So this, um, this is a gold painter's paint pen. So we'll take a spot over here someplace, but you can add You know, you can come back to some of the symbolism types of things that you used, we used in the very beginning. I guess my feeling about books is that um, no matter what, I can always learn something. And so, you know, I mean, I have a col huge collection of books. And it's got to be a really bad book for me to get rid of, you know. I've gotten rid of a few in my day, but really not very many. Because there's always something that I can learn. Uh, 
Oops, wrong color. And then, you know, I mean, literally, the sky is the limit. You can just keep, this is where I can get lost in this kind of detail stuff. For a really long time. And, you know, just adding, adding stuff to it so that it begins to become more integrated into a whole. Okay, so as I started to do a minute ago, let's see if we can get this dry on this one side. see what color do we want to use I'm gonna do something that's not super um, outrageous and this particular color is um, graphite So I'm just going to work, you know, along that edge. I don't need it to be super duper smooth. I prefer it to have a little bit of a, where this line right here is not perfectly smooth. That's my preference. Some people want it to be just perfect. That's not me. And then I can come back and if I needed to, I can actually put get a little bit of water mixed with the Inca Gold if I needed to fill in more of the canvas for some reason. But that's kind of the, the concept of it. Um, and then once that's completely dry, then I buff that with a soft cloth. And that will bring this, this edge up into a really high shine. Um, some other things that you can do with this to pick up this turquoise. This is turquoise in a fine line bottle. And so I'll just get it flowing and then decide what I want to do with it, you know. So you just keep going and going and going until you've got, you know, till it's what you want it to be. And it feels finished. It feels right. You feel done. And pretty much when you're done, you know, 
I mean, for me, this is the way it works. When I feel done, it's just obvious that it's finished. And so this probably needs a little bit more work on it, but we're going to sign it and call it good for the moment. And it's done. Done enough. Done enough for the stream. So you got the idea, you know. And the, I, I would, I'm still going to come in here and play with, you know, some of the edges and some of the um, more border type stuff around it. Because that just, it, you know, that's not feeling finished to me yet. But, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, anyway. It's fun kind of a project. And let me see if I can show it to you with my other camera so you'll get a better a better look at the uh, colors. And what I'm trying to do is not get my hands in all the wet because it is super drippy wet at this point. So let's come up here in the upper left corner. Okay, so we're up in the upper left corner. So removing across. Like that. Now, you're looking at this closer than anyone is ever, ever going to look at it. But just so you can see the details. Okay, and that is the story of that. So when I get, you know, if I have time to do anything else to it before I take the picture and write the blog post about it, um, I'll do that. If not, you know, it'll probably live as the way it is. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So hopefully that... Um, will give you something to play with. Maybe a technique or two that you haven't used before. So let me get this out of the way somewhere where the sponsors are not going to get into it. And don't forget, if you don't want to write with the dropper and the ink, then you can just draw with it. You know, so you can draw things. This is entirely drawn with um, the ink dropper. So don't don't forget that you can do that too. So fun stuff. Okay, let's get out the sponsorities and wrap this up for today. Get the wet paint off of the out of the way of little kitty paws. Okay, so let's see if we can see if we can make room for some big old sponsors. Coming out? Are ya? Okay, come here. Come here. Come here. See? This is what's happened to Chance. Since Charlie wasn't eating, Chance had to eat for two. Didn't ya? You had to eat for two. Oh no. Life is tough when you have to eat for two, huh? <laughs> Are you going to come up and see everybody today? Oh, Toothless Wonder. Are you coming to say hello? Come on. Whoa. So here's Charlie in all his glory with no teeth. He's totally toothless now, except for a few little bitty ones in the very front of his mouth. So he looks a little different than he used to, maybe. He certainly doesn't have any big fangs. 
any big Siamese fangs now. <laughs> yeah, I would love to put Chance on a diet. There's very little, very little, um, very little chance of that being successful. <laughs> He's still handsome. He's a handsome boy, aren't you? Even though he doesn't have any teeth left. They're getting old, but they're still hanging in there. Okay, so um, anything else that I need to tell you? Let's take a look. Um, 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 um. That's it. So tomorrow's the VIP class. And um, so those of you who are VIP members, please join me. Check out your um, email. You'll find your information there. And that's that. He is cute. I'm telling you, those fangs, those fangs can really um, get you when they, they don't even mean to, just dragging their face across your hand. They can really get you. So, he's finally eating again, doing well. Seems to be doing a good job at just being himself now. Aren't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Um, yes, I will see you tomorrow, Marion. I hope you guys have a great month. I will be back here on the first Friday of March. So I will see you then. So remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next month. Bye, everybody.